covering all the bases when it comes to recruiting. This is the Athletic Scholarship Podcast, episode number 86. Welcome to the Athletic Scholarship Podcast. I'm John Kugler, Athletic Scholarship Coach and a dad of two scholarship athletes. I'm also the CEO of Recruit Me, a podcaster, author, and speaker. Our sponsor is my new book, The Athletic Scholarship Playbook. It's a complete college recruiting roadmap for high school athletes and parents. Now, this is also available on Audible. If you don't like to read and you want to listen together, go get it on Amazon on Amazon, or on Audible. We've got 15 minutes here for you to change your scholarship future. I'm going to dig in, give you some takeaways you can use immediately. And remember, if you don't want to find this on my website, but you'd rather have a, a handy app to get this podcast, you can get it on the Apple Podcast app, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, iHeart, and others. Just go get it. Make sure you get my freebie, too. If you want the first chapter of the Athletic Scholarship Playbook, it's a download instantly. You go to my website at recruitme.com. Spring training time. And so we're going to cover all the bases. I thought, I thought that would be fitting as we talk about athletic scholarships. Uh, you know, sometimes it's just good to recap, reset, and make sure we're on the right course. So what I'm going to lay out for you are ways that you can cover all the bases in your journey. I don't know whether you're just starting out and you're standing at a home plate ready to swing, or maybe you're at first base, second base. Maybe you're turning third and coming home, and you may have to slide because you're not sure whether you're going to get that scholarship. Wherever you might be, I hope that this episode is one that you'll find yourself somewhere along the line here. And what I have to say will help you get uh, across home plate as a winner. And since we're coming up on it, it's spring and uh, we're going to have summer here soon. Maybe this is your senior year and you're trying to clinch this athletic scholarship. Perhaps you're a junior and you are getting ready for your senior year. You're wondering what would be the best thing to do this summer. Same thing with sophomore and freshman. Every you, you look into the summer, you're saying, what am I going to do? Parents, you're looking ahead maybe more than your son or daughter and you're thinking about summer, what are we going to do in this critical time? And it's time to start thinking about that. So we're going to go through covering all the bases on the way to an athletic scholarship. I'm going to go through these really quickly, really quickly. You can take some notes, and I'll have something for you at the end that you can grab that will help you walk through all these things. I'm going to talk fast going to cover these bases quickly in record time, but I will have something that you can download and have that you can look at, you can write on, you can scribble, you can share together. Anyway, okay, the first thing you want to do is select the right schools to contact. That is step number one. That's right at home plate. When you're standing up there and you're ready to swing, man, you got to know where you're swinging. So select the right schools to contact parents, athletes, Make sure you're talking about this together. This is a joint effort. This is a family affair as you're selecting the right schools. Many variables. Uh, you can listen to past episodes of this podcast because I covered that in detail. But that is the number one thing. You got to have a target before you get going. Secondly, you got to build your introductory packet. This is the handshake with college coaches. You're email, your profile, and resume. Um, you, you've got to have all this together, very carefully crafted. This is your here I am piece. This is who I am. And you want to make sure that you spent a good amount of time crafting this introductory packet. Uh, and then you want to send it to coaches. Send it to the coaches on that list. The next thing you want to do is uh, build that questionnaire because coaches are going to respond back to you and, and ask you to, to follow through, to follow up on something. And the ask that they're going to have likely is go to my website and, and complete this online questionnaire. You've got to be ready for that. I recommend you building your own questionnaire. Otherwise, you'll spend the rest of your life, well, at least now until you graduate, filling out questionnaires. You don't want to fill out 50 to 75 questionnaires. You want to have one built. It's a, a model, a prototype, uh, your master questionnaire that you can then send to coaches. And if they pursue you further, then go back and fill out their questionnaire. But not all of them are going to pursue you further. So build that questionnaire. It's that 
detailed uh, sheet with personal, athletic, and academic information. And that is your questionnaire. Uh, then you want to produce your video. You got to produce your video. Uh, this is key. Coaches are going to want to see you, of course. And videos are, are crucial. This has got to be done early on in the process. You want to have your highlights in there. You want to have uh, continuous footage in competition. You want to have it edited. It does not have to be a professionally produced video. I've gone through that in detail in past episodes as well. The next thing you want to do around the bases is you want to track your communications. Yeah, you can't just rely on remembering all the contacts with coaches, all the calls they they uh, make to you, all the things they send you in the mail and he visits you. It, it just, it's, it's mind boggling. You've got to track it. You've got to have an organized way to have this in a system that tracks communication. A simple Excel spreadsheet will do that. Uh, then the next step is you want to build your updates. As you make your way around the bases here, a uh, one-time communication with coaches is not going to do it. You got to have an organized way to update them on your progress as an athlete and as a student, as a student athlete. These are one page updates, short bulleted information, send it after every season, after every semester with updated grade information, after every SAT and ACT test. This is a way to keep yourself in front of coaches with these updates. We're making our way around the basis. And especially this summer, you're thinking ahead, to, hey, what camps should I attend? What showcases? Uh, what tournaments should I travel to? And this is the next step around the basis. You got to choose the right camps, showcases, and tournaments. Uh, set your budget. <laughs> you don't have an unlimited budget, of course. What is your budget for these things? You don't want to spend the entire summer at camps, showcases, and tournaments. Be selective. And just one hint here. I've mentioned this in the past, but maybe you're a new listener. Uh, a camp that you attend should be one that is a prospect camp. One where indeed they are looking at the attendees of this, this camp as prospects. They're trying to find talent for their future. You got to make sure that that is the kind of camp that your son or daughter is attending. Secondly, you want to attend a camp where you have interest as a family in that school. Don't just attend camps hoping the coach uh, may find interest in you, but start with your interest in that school. And there may be some camps and showcases where there are multiple coaches there. Of course, the showcases they do. But camps where you have multiple coaches there, those are ideal as long as one, at least one, fits into your list of schools that you establish in that first step. So be selective, be strategic as you choose these camps, showcases, and tournaments. The next thing you want to do is you make your way around the bases, covering all the bases here. You want to register with the NCAA and NAIA eligibility centers. You got to do that. Uh, beginning of your junior year, ideal time to do that. Make sure you get that done. Uh, and then something else you got to do athletes, man, you got to be a student athlete. This is the next step around the basis, your academic performance, understand the NCAA and NAIA academic requirements, go onto their websites, find out what courses you must take those core courses that will make you eligible for competing at the college level. Uh, you want to focus on getting your GPA up, uh, focus on improving your SAT and ACT scores, really have uh, an effort here, concerted effort on your academic performance. It could make the difference between you and another equally talented athlete getting that scholarship because you are academically better. And then the last thing you want to do in your way around the bases, the know the recruiting rules. You do not have to be an expert. You don't get fined and suspended and, uh, you know, all the bad things you're hearing about uh, in at colleges and universities for the recruiting violations. That's not up to you. But it's good to know the rules going into it. The coaches need to know the rules. 
They need to be experts on the rules. You don't need to be an expert, but know the recruiting calendar. Understand what type of communication coaches can have with you as a student athlete, depending on where you are in your high school career. There's a recruiting calendar you can go to on the NCAA website. So those are the things you need to, to do as you run around the bases, slide into home. And these are, these are those, those things again. Step by step, it's select the right schools to contact. Secondly, build your introductory packet. Third, build your questionnaire. Fourth, produce your video. Fifth, track your communications. Six, build your updates. Seven, choose the right camps, showcases, and tournaments. Eight, register with the NCAA and NAIA eligibility centers. Nine, academic performance. And 10, know the recruiting rules. Wow, that was a lot. And as you can tell, I was rushing through it. <laughs> Not to scare you but to introduce you to this and bring it to you in one cohesive episode because I've camped on some of these things in separate episodes. I've got something for you. It's my 10-point recruiting checklist that has these things on there plus bullet points under each one and resource links to NCAA uh, pages especially. And you can get that if you go to uh, my website, recruitme.com, and you'll find in the show notes, just click the link to the 10-point recruiting checklist if you don't have that already. The 10-point recruiting checklist goes through all these 10 points, and I want you to have that. Uh, you just, just go get it there. Recruitme.com slash podcast. Recruitme.com slash podcast episode 86 and click the link there in order to access the 10 point recruiting checklist. As I mentioned, you gotta start thinking about what you're gonna be doing this summer. And that's why I wanted to bring this episode to you, a cohesive episode. You can see where you're at in this process. Maybe you've already built your introductory packet and sent it out. Uh, maybe you're already going back and forth with coaches. You're interviewing them, they're interviewing you. You're already tracking your communication. And maybe you're just getting started in this whole process. I certainly hope this helps you. Go back and listen to previous episodes because a lot of good stuff there. Um, get a hold of my book. You'll find it all this expanded in the book. And I just wanna help you as you launch into your scholarship journey wherever you might be along the way. Okay, that's it for now. We'll talk to you next Tuesday. God bless. Have a fantastic week.